Robinson. He even went down the sideline and he's got Cass Decker bringing you UCLA football content all throughout the year for LA Football Network. What is up and welcome to another edition of the Bruin Bible. Will Decker, your host. Make sure you guys are liking and subscribing the podcast. We are brought to you guys today by our advertisers. Our advertisers are Bell to Bell Fitness, Shator, a realtor out in Arizona, former Bruin alum. And my main man, Howard Chang, a realtor right here in Los Angeles. Let's go through them, guys. Uh, Bell to Bell Fitness is a boxing gym on the West Coast used by their FIT acronym, Fight Inspired Training. My main man, Tony Gonzalez, was the boxing coach for UCLA for over 10 years. He has built this gym on the West Side to learn how to boxing, stay in shape, and get you all the essentials you need to become somebody that is obsessed with boxing and fitness. Make sure to check it out. Go into Bell to Bell Fitness and say you heard about it from the Bruin Bible, and you're going to get a free session with Tony Gonzalez. So make sure to check that out. Shay Tor, my main man. Shay Tor is a real a licensed real estate agent in Arizona and a lifelong Bruin. He's a current Wooden Athletic Fund donor and football season ticket holder. When not selling houses or going to UCLA games, he loves to travel the country checking out different arenas, ballparks, and stadiums. If you're looking to make the move to Arizona or know someone who is, please reach out to our loyal friend, Mr. Shea Tour. His phone number is 602-487-3975. Once again, his number is 602-487-3975. Make sure to check that out. And then the local realtor we got out here, Howard Chang. Howard Chang is a local realtor with the Serene team at EXP Realty. Their team has an office right here in Culver City. Though they help clients buy and sell homes all over the L.A. County and the surrounding areas, Howard and his team do a ton of business and are super in tune with the market, knowing winning strategies to give their clients a competitive advantage, have amazing vendor referrals, are a one-stop shop for anything real estate, and just provide a ton of value for their clients. Howard and his partner, Kyle Draper, are UCLA alums and a huge, huge fans of the UCLA football and basketball programs. You often see them at games, tailgating and networking, and staying involved with the UCLA alumni community. They would love to help any fellow alumni with accomplishing their real estate goals. So if you guys have any real estate needs in the LA area, look no further. Howard is your guy. All right, guys, we're going to go into the episode. Wayne Cook here today. Make sure to check it out. Man, what is up and welcome to the Friday edition of the Bruin Bible. Jamal out of town on business, but we bring in a very familiar friend to my right. The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Wayne Cook in the house, returning and joining us. I've been out of town for the last week. We had some pre-recorded pods, so I'm really excited to dive back into the UCLA yeah. news cycle. There's been a lot of great stuff going on there. Wayne, first and foremost, how are we doing leading into another Southern, Southern California weekend out here in Los Angeles? I'm awesome, man. I, I, it's, it's crazy. We were, I'm just fresh off the lake, man. I just put the boat in the garage. You texted me and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, let's like, cause I feel the same way. Like we haven't talked to UCLA football. I mean, I enjoyed watching softball. I enjoyed watching baseball. I, I, I just got done watching Argentina soccer. So like, I'm not going to lie. I love sports, but I want football. Like it's time. I I, I was theming just because I saw the UCLA camp they just had with all yeah. the prospects, and every time I look up, somebody news get offered uh, getting offered a scholarship. Uh, you felt it. I felt it. The the recruiting has been a, a, a much different tactic, and it's been blatantly obvious. I mean, they're offering a lot more players. Uh, more players are on campus seeing four stars next to a lot of names, but like I've always been one of those people that believe that stars sometimes can be overrated. Like some of the three stars are really good football players. Yeah. Um, and I, I just get really excited about like how many people are talking, even the, even the people that cover UCLA that tend to lean negative are, are like, it's hard not to see what Deshaun's doing and the staff is doing and just not be excited about it. They're putting so much effort and so much positive energy into co into recruiting it, that it's just, it's, it's different. And I, and I love it. 
And, and UCLA has always historically, you know, you know this well. Historically, UCLA has always been able to recruit. Always. But you have to, you 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 have to, you have to still go after it, right? You can't you you can't just, just say, hey, we're UCLA, come on, because it's a different landscape than it was 20, 30 years ago. So so like I love what's happening. I'm so excited. Like I love the team we have. I love the recruits we're bringing in. I love the transfers we're bringing in. And I love the fact, and I know you're gonna love this too. I love the fact that every time I see someone predict like where Ethan Garber stands in the rankings of the the Big Ten quarterbacks, or I laugh at that. I go, oh, just wait. Just wait. This guy's going to show you this year that you're wrong. And then when we did, then we see where UCLA's ranked or where Coach Foster's ranked. And I'm like, you know, just wait. I, it kind of get me kind of like, I, I know I'm not on the team, but I'm a Bruin, and I, I get kind of pissed off. And I'm like, I get excited about the opportunity for us to prove people wrong. I, I think that's what's so great about sports. Yeah, it is my favorite thing about sports. I tend to always pull for the underdog, you know, in a lot of situations yeah. when I don't have a team – you know, I'm not, I don't have a rooting interest, if you will. That's what makes sports great is when people tell you you can't do something and yeah. you go out there and prove them all wrong. And UCLA has proven a lot of naysayers wrong here in the early parts of recruiting. Wade, I'm with you. You know, I think stars are just stars until they get on campus. You got to prove yeah. your worth in college football when you get on campus and do practices. Where I am encouraged, though, Wade, is Jaden Hudson, number one safety in mm -hmm. California. The reason I'm encouraged with this. This guy had offers from Georgia, Ohio State, pretty much every school you can think of that's going to be competing at the highest level, your Oregon's, these type of schools, and he chose to go to UCLA. So for me, that was encouraging in the sense where this guy had every sense to go out and go to the powerhouses of college football, and he says, no, I'm going to build one right here at UCLA. And that's what I find encouraging before we get to these stars Huge commitment. We got another guy, Wayne, in the portal right now, or excuse me, in uh, the crystal ball status right now. Uh, Zadarius Rainey Sale, he's out of Washington State, linebacker, four-star kid. He got some crystal balls, headed to UCLA. He's going to be announcing very, very soon. So there's a lot of encouraging stuff. Talk to me about Jaden Hudson committing because, like you said, man, the stars, they mean, they mean absolutely nothing to me until they get on campus and prove their worth. But it's encouraging to see him for like yeah. UCLA over these big schools. I, I, I love what you said there, and and the stars mean something as far as um, the perception of the team. So like like the, as an athlete, I, I'm with you. Like you know when you get on camps, I don't care if you're a three star, four star, five star. I don't care. Nowadays, there's usually money involved in that too, so it probably matters a little bit more than it used to. You know, you came in as a rookie, you got hazed no matter who you were, right? Hey, rookie, pick yeah. up the pick up the ball bag and, and carry it in today. Like, you know, hey, don't forget my towel, buddy. Like, stuff like this. But things are a little bit different now because money's involved. But but here's where I, I like where you're going. To get the number one safety in California lets every other recruit know that we're bringing in big-time guys. Because to everybody else, and to act like recruiting, I mean, because let's be honest, there's someone sitting out there right now going, well, hey, Wayne, you do know that that the teams have the most five stars are usually winning. And, yeah, you're right. That's true. Uh, and, and so – and we also know there are only a handful of teams out there actually get five-star guys because there's only so many of them out there, right? There's a small number of five-stars, and they tend to go to the same schools. Um, but – the idea that you're bringing in more four-star, you're bringing in big-time recruits. Safety is one of the most important positions in football, especially in the modern era. Modern era of football, man, safeties matter so much. And if you bring in these players and you're, you're looking like, now you're recruiting the next guy, they go, wow, look at the recruits they're bringing in. Look at the transfers they're bringing in. Look at the guys from this high school they're bringing in. Like, you start these pipelines, and then you go like, man, the staff is amazing. What Deshaun Foster and Eric Bieniemy and – Coach Malloy and all these people are doing, Coach Whitfield are doing, and it's, it's, it's incredible, and the players want to be there. More recruits are coming to take a peek that maybe wouldn't have done that before. And then the ones that get on campus are like, wait a second, this place is awesome. I love what they're doing because they're not only just not believing what other people are telling them, they're believing what they see. And the hype on social media is real too. So I, I, I think that the stars matter a ton in that way. As a player, you got to come in and earn your earn your job. Like I've, I've, some of my favorite players have been three star guys, but I love some. We've got some great five star guys too. So to me, um, it matters a ton. It builds the perception of UCLA as being a big time program that can bring in big time players, and that's awesome. Yeah, it's fantastic, man, and so encouraging to see UCLA be in the mix for these four and five star guys.
the old saying goes, it's not necessarily X's and O's, but it's the Jimmy's and Joe's that you bring out there. So a lot of yeah. guys coming to Westwood, man, and it's got UCLA Bruin fans very, very excited. We got to touch on this base too, Wayne. New chancellor announced, yeah. Julio Frank coming from University of Miami. I think a lot of UCLA athletics fans were very excited about this hire because Miami, they have their academics, but they're also very forward thinking when it comes to these sports platform that they can provide out there from what i've heard julio frank is very similarly minded to that where he looks sports as a platform to elevate the university which is what we all wanted to hear talk to me about the julio frank hiring because it's a big deal he's gonna be the seventh chancellor in the history of ucla as gene block is stepping down at the end of this term yeah and this is never a knock on on who's leaving gene block was a was a great guy he's and you know, i know he, his last little bit as chancellor was a little rough with all the protests and everything on campus and everybody has an opinion on everything and it's it's really hard to be perfect in the social media world but but to bring in someone and i don't really, i don't even know if i'm right here i heard something about their like 30 percent increase in, in school spending on athletics during his time. I, I, I think I read something like that somewhere. I could be totally wrong. So don't quote me on that percentage, but there, there's an impression that he cares about sports. And I, and I will say this to, to anybody. Uh, it was funny. One of my games popped up on, on social media or something the other day. I'm like some class, somebody does that like classic sports. And I was watching, I was cracking up because Chancellor Young, from my day, was standing right next to Terry Donahue in a huge game. Like it's like it's almost like, hey, Chancellor, we're trying to coach here. And if he put a headphone on to call plays, he would have. And I always tell people, you want that. You you want people that. And, and by the way, this is for every high school coach, every college coach uh, in America. If your football team is good, your your school environment is better. It's it's that simple. It, it, it changes the, the the energy and the atmosphere on your campus. It, it's so important. Football is a huge sport in America. If you don't know that, I don't know where you've been. If you've been under a rock, it's the most popular sport by far. Um, soccer people get off my back. But we're not talking global. We're talking America. And the idea is, is that if you have a good football program and you have a school that supports that football program, by the way, this just in, you can still be the number one school in a public school in America or in the world and be a really good sport. So you see like proof that in our history. We've always been a great academic school. We've also been a great sports school. We have the second most national championships, I believe. I think we're still second, right, behind Stanford uh, it, it, of, of all sports. So you can do it, and you can have a great football team. We're a top 20 program all time if you look at the AP polls. Yeah, we slipped a little bit in the last couple of decades, but, that, but we're not far to get right back into that. So, so to me, um, I, I, I love the hire so far. We haven't seen anything yet, so we have no idea. But it looks good, and I hope the chancellor gets that sports matters to your school environment. And you can be both. You can be great at sports and great at academics, and that's because UCLA is awesome. If anybody can be great at everything, it's us. So let's just go. Let's get after it. I'm excited. Uh, go a lot of changes, but it seems like we're going in a good direction. Yeah, UCLA truly the every man and woman school. And I mean, you're talking about the national championships. We just won a volleyball championship yeah. this past year. We won women's soccer a few years back. We're always in the mix. I mean, the women's basketball team was a high seed in the NCAA women's tournament. I think the men's team will be competing for stuff. So it's just, it's the culture of champions here at UCLA. And we want to bring that to the highest level moving forward. Wayne, I was trying to cook up something we could talk about in this. We've been doing some positional rankings and I know you and I geek out about this position a lot. It's the linebacking room for UCLA. And there's a couple guys I want to talk to you about with the preview heading into the season. I think we actually have a very strong bunch coming back. When you look at it, you got Kane Madrano coming back. You got Olafemi Oladejo. The big kind of unknown is if John John Vons is going to test the waters for baseball or he's going to come back. And this would be a huge, huge loss if we were not able to get him. He is He was rated 82.9. Uh, PFF grade. He's the fourth highest returning graded linebacker, according to PFF, heading into the Big Ten next year if he is able to return. So there's a lot of talent there in the linebacking room. But before we get there, Wayne, I think we got to talk about Darius Muwasau. It kind of came and went, you know, his draft status. He got picked by the Giants back there. I know you were in the press conference, I think, with me after the LA Bowl and what he was just saying and what it meant for him to be a Bruin transfer from Hawaii. 
I don't think there was a dry eye in the room when he was giving the speech. Talk about the heart and soul of a defense. Great in pass protection. Great going up and, you know, up to the line of scrimmage, knocking the running back back, blitzing the quarterback. Wausau was an underrated Bruin in his time at UCLA. I just want to give him his due. Talk to me, Wade. He, so th- this is, to me, it, first of all, I, I 100% agree. agree. So we like Gary Smooth when he was at when he was at Hawaii. I remember, you know, Matt Stevens and I talked about him. We're like, this guy can play, man. I forget he had a ton of tackles against us when we played them. Um, I did think his first year with UCLA, if he could improve on anything, it was his speed. I thought he was a little bit, a little bit slow. I, I didn't think he was as athletic as he could have been. And then he came out this last year, and this is what I love about UCLA so much. We've been, we've really been, and you got to give the last staff, which a lot of these guys were on that staff too, a ton of credit for produce, for really improving on um, players just got better. They, they, from the day they got on campus to the day they left, they kept getting better and better and better. And then a lot of guys are going to the NFL. I mean, if you look at all the numbers that float around about teams that are putting players in the NFL. UCLA probably has put more players into the NFL than what their win loss record would. It should almost be a little bit better with as much talent as we've had, but it's, 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 we're, we're building athletes and we're doing it the right way. And we're using science and training and there's so much good stuff happening at UCLA. Gary Smooth out by the end of last year was phenomenal. I mean, he, he approved so much. The player development was so good. He was coached so well. But at the end of the day, the culture of this team is we're going to work hard. You don't get to be a top defense in the country, you know, one of the best out there, if you don't have work ethic. And if you look over at Latu or if you look over at Kane or you look over at Femi and you're Darius and you're there, they're looking to you to call the plays. He's the one to call the plays. He was the one quarterback in that defense. You better be busting your butt. And so – I'm very happy that he got drafted. Um, I think he's going to be a, a, a he's going to have to work his butt off in the NFL because they're even faster there. But I think he'll do great because he's one of those guys that has anticipation. I mean, like you pointed out, he got way better in pass coverage too. And then here's how Darius Moosell helps this year's team. From what I understand, and I you know I love Femi and I love Kate. Those two guys talk to me probably more than anybody out there. I love these guys. I mean, I I invite them over for dinner if they'd come. They're just they're great young men. Kane talked about he talked about he's got the headset now, you know, because that's going to be something new this year, right? He's going to be getting the calls, and and Femi might be inside and outside. Like these are things we can look forward to. And then he talked about John John. But what's great about Darius is he's taken a lot too too. Those guys have passed on that leadership and that work ethic. And I guarantee you these guys haven't missed a beat. I was so impressed. And that's the one thing that I hated about all the Big Ten, like, oh, you know, UCLA lost almost whole, almost its whole defense. I'm like, you guys are being lazy. Jake Tully is back, and he's in our deep tackles are back. We don't even have the same names. They're back. We got beef in the middle. Yeah, we lost some rush ins. Our linebackers are going to be studs. Okay, if, if, if John John comes back, and let's hope he does, you know, he just asked to get – remember, Ali Connell was practicing in spring. Like we have guys, I'm like, are we got guys that can play? And and I'm I'm missing some guys right now because I'm getting excited. Those guys can play linebacker. When you have D tackles that can yeah. occupy blockers, those linebackers are going to be all over the field. They're going to be absolutely all over the field. So what Darius did was he's that leader that when he leaves that next wave of guys and great programs all have this the seniors that go move on they pass on that work and that's what alabama had for years right when those guys leave and go to the nfl the next guys are ready to step up and they do exactly what the seniors that left or the guys that left with the draft early it's almost like you're leaving a legacy hey don't let us down work as hard as we did or get better than we were. And I, I think Darius was one of those types of leaders that definitely passed that on to this next generation of guys. Yeah. And, you know, we had arguably one of the best defenses we've ever had at UCLA this last year. And a lot of the talk was about the defensive line. They deserved every bit of that praise. I just think Mwasa was kind of let out of some of those national yeah. conversations as he was such a integral part of this defense being as successful as they were. We got a lot of love for Mwasa. We wish him nothing but the best with the New York Giants moving forward. Kane Madrano, very quickly. Last year was the breakout year. We always saw a little, you know, tinges of, you know, potential with Madrano. We saw it plain and simple in that Utah game. He made some plays that kept us in that game. Ten total tackles, two sacks, was balling out of his mind that game. Kane is coming in. Like you said, he's going to be wearing the headset this year. He might be the middle linebacker in terms of calling plays. 
What are some of his strengths and what are you expecting from Medrano in the first year of the Big Ten? So I, I, know, I know I've told this story, story too many times, but it came of Medrano and every so often, you know, lately it's been pagan. I just got to get him healthy. I, I find these young guys that have, aren't playing yet. And I'm like, you know what, dude, you're, you're, you're better than you think you are. And, and Kane was a receiver, a young receiver that every time I went out to practice, I'm like, dude, this guy's like natural. He's just got instincts. And when you have instincts to play the game, I don't care if it's going up to get the ball, running routes, or reading a play. He's just got those instincts. He, he runs like a deer. I teased him about maybe being a little thinner, but like when you stand next to him, he's tall, he's athletic, he's long, right? He's got long arms, long legs. Like he can run sideline to sideline. And he now has become where if you, if you want him to be a thumper, He's a thumper. Like, he's just an athlete. And, and I think that one thing I saw last year that made me so excited about Kevin Medrano is he became an instinctive football player. And we all talk about this all the time. I also the same thing about quarterbacks. Like, I see this with, 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 um, with garbage. When you get to the point, like he did this in the bowl game, where you're just throwing because you know where to throw. You're not thinking. You're not worried about your steps. You're not worried about the pass rush. You're not thinking. You're just, like, kind of licking your chops. Like, I know the guy's going to be open and this is going to be a great play. Like, when you get to that point where the light bulb really goes on, and, and last year, Kane played like he had the light bulb on all year. And if he just stays healthy, he's, you know, he's he's an honors candidate. He'll be a guy at the end of the year that'll be getting – him and Femi are going to have a great year. Um, it's just what are the rest of the guys going to do, uh, the other linebackers? Because I think there's some other guys that can step up too. But having those two as, like, our staples in the middle – uh, make, it's really exciting because it's hard to win in the in the Big Ten um, <laughs> without good linebacker play because so many teams are going to want to run the ball, um, and, and you you got to be able to do. And hey, by the way, I, I just got to say this because I, I know we're we're getting close to time here. The the idea that people keep still they keep saying that no, oh, the Big Ten but it's still football people, and yeah. and and UCLA historically, I don't care if it's the SEC or the Big Ten, has done just fine. Like our records against those conferences, I'm pretty sure we have winning records. To be honest with you, I'd have to look them up and give it. I'm pretty sure we do. Um, we're fine. It's it, it's like it's, it's we got big 300 pounders too, and I know that people are like, yeah, but you don't know it's the Big Ten. I'm like, okay, fine. The, I thought the Pac-12 was better last year. They were. So when you're playing against competition like that, I, I trust me. This schedule, I just saw something that had UCLA as either the number one or two top schedule in the country. Yeah. We have a horrible, difficult schedule. But at the same time, it's an amazing opportunity. And it's not like UCLA is going to walk into a Big Ten game and go, oh, my God, we've never played football before. Our guys are going to be fine. And we got a lot of experience. We got, we're talking about a ton of guys. We got a senior quarterback. We got a ton of good receivers. We got linebackers that can bring it. We got yeah. D tackles that can bring it. Like, we got a running back in TJ that can bring it. We got some speed in Keegan. Like, we got some dudes, and and now we just got to put it all together, and that's the important part. From now until this thing's over, the coach has got to figure out a way to put it all together, so that when they come out week one against Hawaii, we're we're kicking some butt and starting to build momentum because we got a second game's Indiana, yeah, into the Big Ten. So so you got to get it going and get this thing figured out. So I, I'm excited, as you can tell. We got to buckle up that chin strap. We're going to Big Ten <laughs> football, Wade. It's going to be fun. That treacherous stretch you're talking about, we go to Death Valley, LSU, yep. back home, Oregon, and then to Penn State, Death Valley. But, hey, you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. That's the road you have to take for UCLA to get back to the top. Wade Cook, so good to see you, buddy. Always a blast having you on here. UCLA's quarterback and our favorite, man. So thank you so much for coming back on, brother. Thanks, Will. Awesome, guys. Ruin by, but we are officially out. You guys have a fantastic weekend here in Southern California. Get out to the beach. Get outside. It is beautiful. We'll talk to you guys next week.